When God creates a disturbance, it's generally not comfortable, it's generally not desired, it's generally not preferred, you don't want it, but if you will tune your ear to listening, because he's talking, when he disrupts the natural order of things, then he says, you will discover that you are a part of a unshakable kingdom. When God shakes things up, disturbs things, when the normal order of the way things you believe are supposed to go or the way they've always been begins to flip and flop and twist and tweak, he says, do not refuse him who is speaking. So when God disturbs something, it's because he talking. You remember growing up with your grandma? When you were growing up with your grandma and they first came out with televisions, if you're old enough to remember that and you're sitting down watching Mighty Mouse and you're sitting down watching whatever your, your, you know, your favorite cartoon was. And then it started thundering and lightning at the good part of the cartoon. It just started thundering and lightning when when you all excited about what you're looking at on TV. And grandma said, turn the TV off. Say what? Turn the TV off. Grandma, why I got to turn the TV off? Because God is talking. In other words, when there was disturbance up there, it called for adjustments down here because grandma said God is talking. She didn't make that up. That's Hebrews 12. It says when God shakes, the natural disturbance of a thing is because he wants you to pay close attention because he has something to say and he knows you won't listen unless he mess stuff up, flip stuff up, chain stuff up. So when he disturbs the natural order of a thing, do not refuse him who is talking because God has something to say. Have you ever been on an airplane and there's turbulence? It's going up and down and flopping back and forth, and you you now getting a little nervous. You tightening a seatbelt that's already tight. You, you, you grabbing the handles like that's going to do something. You, you, because you have been disturbed. But you know the feeling you get when the pilot that you don't see comes over the loudspeaker, and he speaks into the turbulence. And he says, well, uh, we, we, we've hit some turbulence at 35,000 feet. I'm going to go down a few thousand feet to find us some smooth air. This will last for about 15 to 20 minutes. Do you know the feeling you get when you just hear his voice in the midst of the turbulence, calming the uncertainty of the insecurity that you're in? God will allow or create turbulence in our life and in our circumstance in order for us to pay closer attention because now we want to hear more of what he has to say in the turbulence that we're going through. If he wants to move you to a new career, he'll create turbulence in the career you're in. If he wants to move you to a new circumstance, he'll create turbulence in the circumstance you're in. If he finds out you love money too much, he'll start breaking stuff down to take away your love for money. He will create a turbulence in the situation because he wants to hear. He wants you to hear him a lot closer than you were previously listening. In fact, he's creating now worldwide turbulence. In case you don't know it, that's what COVID was all about. It was about worldwide recognition that there's stuff out there we can't handle, can't answer, can't fix. So you better pay closer attention. So when God wants to make sure that you are more attuned to listening, whether you choose to or not, because he says you can refuse it, he will allow or create turbulence or what he calls the shaking or the disruption of the normal activity or the normal movement of things. So rather than get mad at God, when there is turbulence, he says, you better listen more carefully to God when there is turbulence. Just like when you hear that bad weather is coming, you know what you do? You pay more attention to the weatherman or weather lady. They get listened to like never before. If somebody says, well, there's a tornado possibly 
you're going to be paying attention because turbulence is on the way. There's uncertainty on the way. When we had our ice storm a few weeks ago, the weather man, the weather lady got undivided attention. We wanted to listen. How bad will it be? How long will it be? And the kids were listening. How long are we going to stay out of school? Everybody listening. Because there is turbulence. That is, things are outside the natural order. He says, God is speaking when there is disruption. Now, the good news is, God is still talking. You need to worry if he's not talking. Okay? God is speaking, using circumstance, disruption, to get our attention so he can reveal to us. And that's good news in a bad situation because he says what he's doing is he is creating a separation. He says the removing, verse 27, of those things which can be shaken. So he's getting rid of something, of created things. He's trying to change something in the physical to replace it with something in the spiritual. Ah. You know why? Because he sees we've gotten too attached to the physical as of created things. The things that the five senses partake of. When we get attached illegitimately to the wrong kingdom, then he will create a disturbance to detach us. He does not want us Overly connected to this kingdom, to this world. We're supposed to be in it, but we're not supposed to be tied to it. We're not supposed to have it as our ultimate obligation. And so disruption is what he will bring. When a woman is in labor, she's in her ninth month, pain sets in. But the pain is setting in Because the baby wants out. The baby wants out and is serving notice on the mother, you gonna want me out. (laughs) And I am in the process, I'm in the process of separation, of leaving the womb. That's bad news, pain, but that's good news, birth. Because the purpose of the pain is to produce the birth. So when God creates a disturbance, it is an uncomfortable situation designed to produce something better from the spiritual realm for our lives. So he is saying, you know, when you throw up, your stomach is upset, it's upset. But, you know, throwing up, as nasty as it is, you generally feel better after you vomit. You feel better after you regurgitate because it's getting rid of something that is causing a discomfort in you, a disturbance in you, so you throw up to get it out of you. There is a separation that occurs. When God creates a disturbance, it's generally not comfortable, it's generally not desired, it's generally not preferred, you don't want it, but if you will tune your ear to listening, because he's talking when he disrupts the natural order of things, then he says, you will discover that you are a part of a, watch this, unshakable kingdom. Oh, watch this now. I'm going to show you, he says, why you can't be overly tethered to this world, this culture, and this kingdom. And the reason why you can't is I'm going to shake it up. And I'm going to show you, if you put all your eggs in this basket, you're going to be shook up too. Because you're attached. You know, if there's an earthquake on the ground, folks in the plane aren't shaking because they're not attached. It's the things that are attached that get shaken in an earthquake. But what God wants to do is lift us up to a new spiritual reality of a kingdom that's not attached so it doesn't shake when everything else around you is toe up from the flow up. When everything around you has been disturbed, it's shaking, it's, it's discontinuity and disconnected. So God is allowing the shaking 
to reveal the unshakable kingdom. Because you are listening to his voice. A young boy was on his plane with uh, uh, flying somewhere. And um, he was uh, sitting next to an older lady and the plane hit some really bad turbulence. And everybody was screaming on the plane because it was dropping suddenly and it was just going from side to side and felt like you were going to crash. And the kid was just there. He was just there playing. He was just, just having a good time. And the older lady was irritated. She was irritated that he was so calm when the whole plane is in disruption. She looked at the little boy and she said, son, why, how can you be so calm when all this is going on? He looked at the old lady and said, because my daddy is the pilot. See, when you know to whom you are attached, then while everybody else is going through all of this, your connection to God's kingdom purpose will stabilize you because his kingdom up there can't be shaken by circumstances down here. It doesn't mean those circumstances aren't real. It just means they're no longer in control. They're no longer dictating. They're no longer calling the shots because it is an unshakable kingdom. You know, when it rains on the ocean, the rain, no matter how hard it hits, can only penetrate the water down to approximately 25 feet. So the rain is coming from up there and it's hitting the water and You've seen the disturbance of rain and wind on water and it can penetrate 25 or so feet. So what fish do when it's raining is go 26 feet. In other words, the rain is the indication it's time to go deeper. When God disturbs the natural order of things, when your world is turned upside down, When things are in discord, God is saying, time to go deeper. Time to go deeper. Disturbance is to call our attention to time to go deeper. Okay? So how do you go deeper in God's purpose? Well, look at what he says. Therefore, verse 28, since we receive the kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude. Hmm. I want you to be thankful. Now, the tendency when our world is shaken is to complain. And that's the natural. I mean, I don't like this. I don't want this. I don't agree with this. You know, it's to complain. He says, let us show gratitude. But how can I show gratitude if I'm in a disturbance? You're not showing gratitude for the disturbance. You're showing gratitude for the purpose. You're saying, Lord, I don't like this. I don't want this. I don't agree with this. I don't desire this. But because you talking and because you have something to say, which means it's worth hearing, I want to thank you for how you're going to use this to take me deeper in my purpose with you. I'm not thanking God for the problem. I'm showing gratitude for the purpose. God was taking Israel from Egypt to the promised land. The purpose was the promised land. The wilderness was development for the promised land. He says, I let you get hungry so that you could see I could feed you. I let you get thirsty. So you could see I'm your provider for your water. So yeah, I let you get hungry. I let you get tired. I let you get weary. I let you get thirsty because I knew you would depend on me more to have to come through. Why did I do that? Deuteronomy says, so that when you get to the promised land and when you got houses that you did not build, farms that you did not develop, Blessings that you did not, that you should not forget the Lord your God. So I let you go through a hard time so that you won't forget me. 